This is Movie Time. Leslie Mitchell reporting. Conditions were just about as good as they could be for the first post-war cup final, and those lucky enough to get seats at Wembley had every prospect of watching a really thrilling battle between Charlton and Derby. As a matter of fact, the crowd numbered round about 100,000, and they were entertained by the combined Siemens bands and the band of the Grenadiers while waiting for the match to start. The two teams, Charlton White Shorts, Derby Black Shorts, had had rather a nervous time waiting, I expect, but now they lined up, ready for their presentation to the king. After the singing of the national anthem, Derby were first to be presented. Number two is Jack Nicholas, the captain. Reg Harrison, seven, outside right. Vic Woodley, their goalie. Jack Howe, three, left back. Walter Musson, six, left half. Horatio Carter, eight, inside right. Peter Doherty, ten, inside left. Douglas Duncan, eleven, outside left. Jim Bullions, four, right half. Nine, Jack Stamp, centre forward. And Leon Lutie, five, centre half. Charlton, Don Welch, captain. Sam Bartram, goalie. Six, Bert Johnson, left half. Eight, Bert Brown, inside right. Five, John Oakes, centre half. Leslie Fell, seven, outside right. John Shreve, three, left back. Harold Phipps, two, right back. Four, Bert Turner, right half. Nine, Arthur Turner, the only amateur. And Chris Duffy, outside left. When the King had joined the Queen and the Princess in the Royal Box, Mr. E.D. Smith called the captains for the toss-up in which Don Welsh beat Jack Nicholas. And the cup final was on. After Derby had followed through right from the kickoff, Charlton promptly made a counter-attack. Sailor Brown, number eight, was prominent now and throughout the match. Charlton pressed hard and Derby only kept them out at the expense of a corner. Already excitement was running high both off and on the field and there were a number of accidental infringements in the keen struggle for an early lead. Derby made some very dangerous raids with Carter, number eight, as the leader of their flying squad. And it was Carter who provided the first really big thrill when he netted. But he was offside, though it took the crowd some time to realise it. <laughs> Halftime came with no score but there was a display of vaulting and agility by members of the Army Physical Training Corps who seemed, if anything, almost more athletic than Charlton. The King chats with the president of the FA, the Earl of Athlone. The PT boys become more and more athletic while the crowd waits and watches. With the princess is Mr. Brookhurst, the FA chairman. The second half opened at a fast pace and the crowd were wondering whether Derby were going to make up for a number of chances missed in the first period or perhaps Charlton were going to bring out something extra good this half. There's Sailor Brown making one of his runs. Then the newcomer came on the field to join in this exciting game. He was just making up his mind which side to play for when he was ordered off. Still, he had played in a cup final, which is more than most dogs can say. It was still anybody's match, but Derby had proved the more dangerous in attack. Charlton supporters may have been pinning their hopes on an old gypsy curse which said Derby would never win a cup final. Of course, you can't always tell what a football crowd is thinking or saying, not even in close-up.
Just the same, they were enjoying themselves, each in his own way, that's certain. Then came the number one score. A shot from Derby's left wing went in off Bert Turner. One not for Derby. A slow-motion camera recorded the goal. Bartram had just saved, but was out of position. Then the Duncan Doherty combine went into action again. Turner tried hard to keep the ball out, but, well, it was just one of those things. Excitement, I should say so, but no one guessed that within half a minute, Charlton were going to equalise. From a free kick, Bert Turner scores. He must have felt pretty good at that moment, having put things right, so to speak. One all, but Derby were now giving Sam Bartram a very hot time. With over 35 minutes of the second half gone, the Rams fairly battered at the Charlton goal. Bartram was almost continuously airborne. Time, and still one all, so an extra half an hour has to be played. Welsh having again won the toss, Derby kick off. They attack and keep on attacking. Now they're well on top of a tiring Charlton. Within a minute or so from an opening made by Stamps, Dirty makes it 2-1. Another 10 minutes play and Derby all out for the kill. Jack Stamps, their centre forward, beats Bartram to make it 3-1. time in the extra time, Charlton kick off and though they battled gamely to retrieve the situation in the last period, they can't prevent Stamps doing it again. This really was the end of Charlton. That was only too obvious. So it seems that even gypsies make mistakes sometimes. Anyway, Derby had well and truly laid the curse, and it now remained to receive the cup from His Majesty while the Queen presented the medals to the men who had won such a worthy and decisive victory. Jack Nicholas, who'd been a tower of strength throughout the match, now had his reward. A great moment, this, but the Derby skipper found time and breath to spare for a word into the movie tone mic. Here's what he had to say. Well, I am very pleased to be taking this trophy back to Derby for the first time in history. And I am very proud to be the captain of the side that's done it. I would like to say thanks to all the boys for taking it to Derby.